gentlemen, welcome to another one of Arbiter's Gary's Mod Tutorials. Today we're going to be continuing on with Expression 2 and we've covered uh, the first five lines and basic maths and now we're going to be doing if statements. Now, the purpose of an if statement is to make a decision. If you recall, we have the if statement in the gate selection and that basically, um, if we remember it has A, B and C and it says there if A then B, L, C. What that basically means is that if a condition is true, then it would output a number, otherwise it would output something else. So, it's a decision that if something is true, it will do one thing, and if it's not true, it will do another th It will do another thing. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to write a new expression. Okay, so we're going to make a gate here that's going to make a decision. Now, what this decision is going to do, we're just going to make a really simple one to begin with. And what we're going to do is we're going to say... Um, let's make it largest number so we're going to call it largest number so we're going to have two inputs we're going to have one and we're going to have two I'm not sure if we can have those actually input one and input two remember use capital letters if the thing's fine with it it'll go green as long as you use capital letter and the output is going to be largest I don't think we need any persist ones at the moment so we're going to leave this blank again and once again it's trigger all okay so what we're going to do here, we're going to write the first if statement. Now, the syntax of an if statement, which in simplest terms is the way you write it. You have to write it very specifically to make sure that it has no errors. If you do get an error, it will tell you where it occurs, it'll tell you the line and the character where it has a problem, but just to avoid errors. So, if we write it out like it would be on a normal, uh, what we call it, right. Anyway, ignore what I'm saying, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we start off, we say if A, and A is the condition. So the condition, whether it's true or false, whether something has happened or not, we, that will be a condition. So it will be if one thing is bigger than another, if something is bigger than something else, if something's smaller, if it's equal to, not equal to, anything like that. And uh, our first condition, so if the condition is true, then we say B. Otherwise, we write else all in lowercase, space, and then those are curly brackets, not regular brackets, but the first condition is in regular brackets. So the condition is in regular, the outcomes are in curly brackets. Or, well, yeah, they are curly brackets. Else, and then C. So we have two different outcomes f based on one condition, on, on the, the status of one condition. So that's how you write them out. Oops, sorry, didn't put it. Yeah. <coughs> and that is it. So. What we're going to do is we're going to write our first if statement. So we're going to delete this, obviously, because that's a pile of crap. That, that won't work. And we're going to say this. We're going to determine which is the larger number from two inputs. So we're going to say if, and then in brackets, input 1 is greater than input 2 to, say, largest, box brackets, equals input 1 because obviously input 1 would be the biggest so we can drop this down to the next line because we haven't quite ended the if statement yet <coughs> if you understand that so we haven't actually ended the if statement so we can just drop it on we can drop it on down to the next line and it will assume that it belongs to this if statement okay and then Obviously, if it's not, if input 1 is not bigger than input 2, that should, that should be a space, then it obviously means that input 2 is the biggest. So we say else largest equals input 2. Oh, Scott. I'm just, I'm just going to leave him there. That's Scott. He says the power of love. It's a force from above. Yeah, that, that, that's happening. <sighs> Go away. <coughs> so, we have when the imp when the variables are fed in it triggers and when it triggers it asks if input 1 is bigger than input 2 if it is biggest then it sets this variable largest to be input 1 obviously because input 1 is the biggest that's the decision we've just made however if it isn't which is the else bit then it sets the output to be input 2 because that like those are the only two choices we can't, they they can't be one or the, they can only be one or the other and if it isn't that one then it has to be that one which means, though, if we save and exit this as largest number and stick this down, <coughs> just spawn a screen here. Uh, screen. 
there we go and we'll get a um, two constant values so we have two numbers there 5 and 110 so let's spawn those so input 1 is uh, 5 and input 2 is 110 and what we have to do now is wire up the output to there so it's quite clearly noted that the biggest output is 110 so let's use a different number uh, our third number there is 10 so we stick that on and let's say that input 1 is the biggest now so input 1 is 110 and input 2 is 10 and it's still saying that's the biggest number so let's get rid of 110 and let's say that input 1 is now 5 and say it's gone to 10 so it's always selecting the biggest number um, so those are how if statements work I'll go through a bit more of the syntax with you and then show you something else cool that you can do um, okay so we have that that's selecting the biggest number there but these are not the only that that, that isn't the only syntax you can use if I just update if I just open the same gate again uh, large number right open it right okay so here's what we had <coughs> okay now we don't have what if what if we have two numbers that are the same so let's say that input one is equal to input two then what do we do? It doesn't, it's not going to select the largest number, it's not, it's not going to select them both, we're going to encounter an error, really. So if we add another line of code in here and say that if input 1 oops, I'm not putting brackets in, if input 1 is equal to input 2 now you may have noticed I've used two, bra two equal signs here, that's not a mistake. When it's a condition you are comparing two variables and when you're comparing you need to use a double equal sign not a single just a double however if you are setting the value of something like this when you're setting largest only use one you only need to use two equals when you are comparing two things when you are just setting stuff it's fine just to use one um, besides this if you wait, since I'm on the subject you can also do exclamation mark equals and that means does not equal so quite frankly we could move this up here to the top line and then this would run this if statement would run when this isn't true which would be a nested if statement so basically if, if I'm just to show you here let's say oh, copy that so we're saying that if uh, if input 1 does not equal input 2 then we do this now since this is a result we're going to have to put this in curly brackets which I'm doing now and that means that whenever input 1 does not equal input 2 it'll run this this uh, this code that we've just written that selects the biggest number however we can then write else which will be the else of this if and not this one because this one's done with then we say that uh, largest equals 0 just as a kind of error checking device so let's do that so save and exit I wish I hadn't deleted all my stuff now and then let's get our two constant values out three in this case so input one is let's say five and then it's already selecting five because input two is zero at the moment but say we say input two is also five it resets to zero because it's knowing that the two inputs are equal and then it's saying that's an error that I can't pick the largest because they're both the same so we're preventing an error by resetting it to zero whereas if I was to just change it from 2 to 10 that it's doing it fine again so we've written something there that knows when it's doing an error it's making a decision and it's doing it well now I just want to show you quick the kind of thing you can do with if statements here I've just been having a little play around just to refresh my memory and I've written this um, this cool little uh, thing here which is it's a red green and blue thing it outputs colors now what it does I've got uh, one input and that's the button and three outputs red green and blue <coughs> now <coughs> if I just explain what each one does ignore these top two lines I'll explain that in a second what happens when the trigger button so when the button is pressed it says that if blue equals 255 then change everything to red 
If red is equal to 255, change everything to green. If green is equal to 255, set everything to blue. And then obviously it'll go back to the top and say blue is equal to, yeah. So what it does, basically, is if I was to just on this, and then a light. And then a button, simple button. Then it uh, just wire up all the inputs and outputs. There. I'll put it the colour, but if I press it, it changes to green. And I press it again, it changes to red. And then background to blue. So what it's doing is every time the button is pressed, it's changing the colour output. So we can have three different uh, lights come on just from pressing the same button once or twice, you know. Bit of a disco going on there. <coughs> Who goes to discos anymore? So, but obviously we had a bit of an issue wherein that's fine right in that but there was an issue in when when you spawned it all of them were equal to zero so none of the if statements worked so I ha I'll add in this line here that said that if all of them are equal to zero using this and uh, uh, the ampersand which means and so when red is zero and blue is zero and green is zero so all of them are zero then just de uh, default it to red and that's what worked okay um, as you can see okay as you can see in this I'm using multiple things on each one I'm using you can see this if statement here which I've just explained as does it checks all three you can check multiple components um, anyone who's done programming will know about and and or and 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 or basically mean that if something is an and gate oh you have regular and gates in the the menu where if all the inputs are true it outputs true so and if all the and the, with the OR gate, that if one input is true, they're all uh, the outputs true as well. So, just to exp just to add on that, this ampersand means AND. So it's saying that if red is true, AND blue is true, AND green is true, then output. If you want to do an OR gate, you just change this ampersand to a pipeline. It's a little line there, it's just left of Z. And that means that if blue is true, or red is true, or green is zero, or, or all zero, then to go through the if statement and that's just comparison however with outputs just the same you use a curly bracket you have different syntax for this so just to have two different outputs you separate them with a comma and a space and that's it so those are two extra things there that I forgot to include just there <coughs> but those are the syntax for and or and with outputs to have multiple outputs so I hope this has been informative and that I'll be back next time with the next uh, little bit of E2, hopefully for you. So I'll see you then. Um, I did leave a few messages on my channel just to have a read through about uh, lack of time for doing this sort of stuff. But uh, <coughs> I'll do it when I can. So I'll see you later, guys. Bye. Also, just a massive, massive point to make. Go away, Scott. <coughs> All the syntax and everything is on the wiki for wire expression 2. Here we've got if statements, uh, comments, the the pattern if statements take else else ifs um, these are all huge helps to everything so yeah <laughs>